Dungeons and Dragons is essentially a game that is played with one dungeon master and a group of players. And generally the way the game works is the dungeon master describes the environment, i.e. you see a large castle with guards outside the entrance. The players just, uh, describe what they would want to do. For example, I approach the guard and tell him we're here to see Lord Jernell presenting his handwritten invitation. The DM narrates, narrates the results. He steps aside saying enjoy your stay and never want your travelers. So, Vala Mastasia. Since leaving your home in the Neverwinter Woods several years ago, you've made your home in the small frontier town of Phandalin. It didn't take you long to get familiar with all of the townsfolk or their wallets. You've even gotten in, in good with Townmaster Harbin Wester. The old fool believes you to be a noble of Neverwinter. Who could blame him, though? Your disguise is immaculate. So, currently, you are in your room at Stonehill Inn. Currently, you're in your room, um, kind of just looking at these four walls, your beds, and you've got your disguises just kind of laid out in front of you. Suddenly, you hear a knock at the door. I throw them into the trunk that's up against the window. And then, uh, just enter the door? Or? Yep, and then I go around. Okay, so uh, as you kind of creak the door open, you notice Elsa the barmaid. Yes, uh, Miss Val, it's Elsa the barmaid. There's a man downstairs claims he paid you for a service of some kind and you didn't deliver. Anyways, we can't really have this kind of trouble around the bar. Do you think you could come deal with him? I'll be right down. I go downstairs to deal with him. Okay. Um, so that was our first example. We'll cut back to that in a minute. Um, most of the time when a player says, I want to do this or I want to do that, what will happen is there will be a d20 roll in the form of ability checks, saving throws, or attack rolls. Okay. Um, normally the way those work is you roll a d20, add or subtract ability modifiers and or proficiency, and you compare it to a target number. So, for example, over at Fireforge, you are currently in this same tavern. Showing off the skull, apparently. <laughs> well, Anastasia has now walked downstairs. Let's see your figure. Let me set that right there for now. Lord Fireforge, it's been a while since you've had to adorn your weapons and armor. Seeking a short brief peace and quiet, you've spent the last several weeks staying at Stonehill Inn in the small frontier town of Phandalin. But tonight isn't about peace and quiet. Your war buddies have made a special trip to Phandalin to see you. Stonehill Inn is filled with dwarven warriors, human soldiers, mixed in with an occasional elven archer. As you enjoy your ale, a gray-bearded dwarf stumbles over to you, wrapping his arms around your neck. Hey! A little help with the battles, Ulrich! We need those three moved over a ladder! Can you believe we drank the first six already? Oi! I'll help you. Alright, so how you want to do this? You want to just... Do it nice and easy, one barrel at a time. You want to flex your muscles, do two at a time. I'm going to do one really under each arm. Really seem like a man, three at a time. One under each arm. All right, one under each arm. Go ahead and make a strength check. Uh, 11 plus 3, 14. All right. So uh, quickly walking over, you kind of pick up a barrel under each arm and uh, just kind of... you. At first, you look like you're doing all right. Just kind of... And then you see your arms starting to... You drop both barrels and ale just spills all over the floor. And the whole tavern is just laughing hysterically. So, moving on to another type of ability check is a skill check. If you look at your character sheet, you'll notice that each of your ability is several different kinds of skills. Radgar Umbriak. Oh. Several of your fellow former soldiers from the Neverwinter Army were on a trek south to visit an old friend named Ulrich Fireforge. You were busy with work at the <coughs> temple when the caravan left, but confident in your abilities to defend yourself, you decided to make the trip alone, hoping you'd catch up with the others along the way. However, you do see on your way an injured deer with a large piercing wound in its leg. Go ahead and make a medicine check in order to kind of scan your surroundings for soothing herbs. To effectively wrap up the deer's wood. What kind of herbs? Yes. Ooh. Uh, eight. So kind of just looking around, uh, immediately what you find is these leaves that kind of can be fastened together. 
to form sort of a makeshift bandage around its leg. <laughs> Looking at ability checks, one more type of ability check you uh -huh. can make is a contest. That's the way <clears throat> one person makes an ability check. Instead of comparing it to a target number, you compare it to another ability check. So, for example, Arabaliadin. You also have been roaming the wilderness of Neverwinter Wood for some time since leaving your home in the Neverwinter Wood. You've been headed towards the Tribor Trail, but several days ago you noticed a large company of what looked like retired military men, mainly dwarves and humans. You're skeptical of any large civilized army's intentions, but it was too dangerous to approach such a large group alone. Now, however, you notice that one of them is lagging behind, sporting the holy symbol of Tempest, a god of war. He's a dwarf, and his armor is adorned with the same insignia as the company who passed earlier. He appears to be surveying the crops in search of something, standing close by a wounded deer. You've seen numerous animal traps in the area lately, which disturbed you deeply, and you're wondering if this man and his company have something to do with it. Make a stealth check. Where's the Legos, man? Right. <laughs> On that one. Um, as you're kind of looking around, you <laughs> hey, I'm trying to hide. Yeah, yeah you, you, you kind of find oh, the, you find these really leaves insane. that you use to uh, kind of oh. wrap up the deer's wound. And while you're wrapping up the deer's wound, you just kind of, we'll say, you shout behind you. You see this elf kind of lurking, trying to hide in some bushes. You're like, I see you, by the way. <laughs> He's the one posting these traps and hurting these poor animals. No, Don't. I'm trying to help this animal. Saving throws are done almost the same as ability checks. The only difference is where an ability check is, I want to try and do this. Saving throw is something happened to you and you have to try and resist it. Um, but it's done the same way. You roll a d20, you get your ability modifiers and your proficiencies, and you, like, and you compare it to a target number. So, for example, Felix Oral Sun. The building tendency have always been strangers to you. Having made the transition from happy child to slave to a thief to a fence and finally to a bard, you've been around your fair share of adventure and love to sing the stories of your tales. <clears throat> having made the most of your having made your most recent home in Neverwinter, you've been tracking down a former fellow thieves guild member, another halfling by the name of Roscoe Greenbottle. Last time you saw him, he made off with your violin. You just recently heard from a trader in a tavern that he was headed south to a frontier town called Fandolin. But no one has heard from him since. So, in an effort to track him down, here you are at the lively Stonehill Inn in Fandolin. The tavern master, a frail old man, hardly more than skin and bones, swaying back and forth, merrily slides you a mug across the, the beer, <coughs> across the bar. You there, little man, try this tasty ale. Brewed fresh by my favorite brewing assistant, Fireforge! I'm sorry, I'm still laughing up with that alcohol. Yeah, he's pointing to you as you're like kind of mopping up all the alcohol all over the room. Felix raises the tankard and sniffs its contents. Um, it smells like very strong ale. Felix downs it. Go ahead and make a constitution saving throw. You know how to do that? Natural 20. Natural 20, you go, 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 go. Slam it down without a mark. An attack roll is, once again, like an ability check or a saving throw, but it's something you make when you're specifically trying to attack somebody. Going back to Ulrich for a moment, you've now kind of finished making up the mess and enough stuff is going on in this tavern that people have forgotten about what you did. Um, <clears throat> there's actually this other guy kind of causing a problem now. He's just kind of bouncing back and forth off of different people and tables and this, uh, the tavern master, the same one that just gave it, Felix, a uh, mug, kind of leans over to you and says, I have a rule in my tavern. No one's allowed to be drunker than me. You think you could take care of him for me, Ulrich? Wait, I shot. About this time, this guy's kind of made his way wobbling over to you. Push my hand up against his chest. I just stop him. Okay. Because I don't want him walking onto me. I don't know how tall he is. Uh, Versus just me. a little bit taller than you, kind of, um, but you're definitely a lot more bulky than him. So you kind of put your arm on it. Hey, what's your problem? What? You've been drinking too much and you need to get out of here. I'm not going nowhere. Don't make me throw you out. I'd like to see you try after you drop them barrels. <laughs> All right, let's go. All right, you throw the first punch. <laughs> I'm just going to uppercut. Go ahead and roll to attack at advantage. Uh, 14. Straight yeah. into the chin. 
knocks him off his feet. Everybody just kind of, whoa, there's kind of a uh, just round of applause, everybody cheering and everything around the tavern. To combat. There's a few steps involved in combat. The first thing you do is determine whether either party is surprised. Um, you establish positions, roll initiative, take turns, and begin the next round. So, in these two scenes that we have going right now, while you just knocked that guy out and there's kind of just a round of applause around the whole tavern, you do actually see two guys from the other side of the tavern just kind of stand up and, Hey, that was our friend! Are you going to join them? And you have walked out to the, the tavern room. now. <laughs> Seeing all this commotion going on right now, what is your character doing? I'm just trying to figure out who it was that I was supposed to go down and take care of. Um, you have no idea. There's so much commotion going on right now. There's no hope of figuring out who she was talking about. I just wonder what's going on down here. Okay, so just kind of hanging out and watching? Mm -hmm. Fair enough. She's going to do that a lot until she gets used to this. That's fine. <laughs> Um, just checking it out. <laughs> like, meanwhile, at the same time, <laughs> at the same time, in the other scene, just as you two guys are kind of figuring out that neither one of you guys had anything to do with the traps, arrows just kind of fly right by both of you and stick into trees behind you. Whoosh, whoosh. And you do notice that far off in the bushes are two poachers. Felix, are you engaging yourself in the brawl in the t stone hill in right now i'll watch okay <laughs> well then i guess i'll just need you you and you to roll initiative oh good 13. um 20. Ooh, nice well, oh, like, i'm plus... last at five um, so the way combat works is on your turn normally what you would do and it gets a little more complex than this but we're going to kind of take it one step at a time uh, what you normally do is you're able to make one movement and one action for the most part. So both of these drunk guys, you kind of uh, step up to you. One kind of comes at you from one side and one from the other, and they both just kind of take a swing at you. How do you dodge it? Ooh, he's <laughs> Excellent. And you are up next in initiative now. Which one is the smaller of the two, left or right? Uh, left. I'm going to swing at the right. All right, go ahead. Oh, and dang. What are you attacking with? Just your fist still? Yeah, I don't have my weapon now. Okay. 18 hit to hit. Uh, I get him for... What'd you roll? Uh, four damage. Uh, I'm just going to go for the jaw on the side. Okay, so you catch this one in the jaw, and he kind of... He actually doesn't immediately fall down. He just kind of stumbles to the side a little. Meanwhile, Areva, you are up first <coughs> initiative here. Um, I would like to cast Ray of Frost on this guy. Go ahead and roll to attack. Nat 20. So yeah, uh, I so, not, so did I. Go ahead and narrate your knockout and or kill, whichever you prefer. So, I cast <laughs> my Ray of Frost, and it's very majestic and sparkly, and frosty and blue and pretty, but it just like completely freezes this person. They are completely dead. Their heart stopped. They're in a frozen ice cube of beautiful blues and sparkles. Up next in initiative is the trapper that she just froze, so that now it's on you. I'm gonna move Chris, okay. to right here, and I'm gonna smack him with a mace smack in the face. Mace. Go ahead and roll to attack. Mace in the face. 17 plus 4, Ooh. 21. Go ahead and roll damage. Eight. Eight. Oh, all together? Yeah. All right. So, um, yeah, I'll say uh, you pull out your maze and just kind of give it a few swings and right across his face and you just instantly floor this guy. You can definitely still see he's kind of got his bearings and he's getting ready to push himself back up off the ground, but you definitely did a number on him. Um, going back to the combat and the bar. Uh, <coughs> has Felix or Val either one decided to step in at this point or are you, we still just watching? I'm just watching the door clean out. <laughs> yeah. <pretty much. laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> there was four. There's still a lot of commotion going on. <laughs> <laughs> um. Even the Stop even it. the people who uh, aren't involved in the altercation are just kind of cheering and yelling mm. and shouting. Well, Can I try slide a hand? Yes. <laughs> um. What are you trying to slide a hand? What yeah. Just anybody what are you in the crowd or somebody fighting? Just anybody in the crowd. Okay. Yeah, um, go ahead and roll a slight of hand check. Uh, 
she's got a 17. 17 all together. Um, you pickpocket the guy standing in front of you and manage to snatch five copper coins. Can I scan you? the room for anyone doing anything suspicious? Go ahead and make a perception check. I'm a regular craft. Seven. Um... You yeah, perceive? everyone in here looks suspicious. It's weird. <laughs> it's like they're a bunch of dirty soldiers or something. The one that you uh, staggered, um, he's still relatively close to you right now, definitely within melee range, but all of a sudden he just dashes across the room. But um, the most, right? Be yes, because he was within he melee distance and he just <laughs> dashed away from you like that. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to grab him by his pantaloons. And just so everyone knows, uh, that's called taking a reaction. Certain very specific situations provoke you <coughs> to have a reaction. You don't always get to take one of those every turn. But because someone was in melee distance, which means they were right next to each other, and he dashed away without taking any kind of disengage action, you get to take an att attack of opportunity. Oh, no. Get back here and finish this dance, boy. Okay. So, yeah, um, he immediately dashed. You, you just kind of go to take a swing at him, and he, his head just disappears right to a second too late. He tried but, uh, to grab his pants, and he touched his butt. You notice that as he dashes across the room, he kind of quickly snatches up a beer bottle, just smashes it on the table, kind of turning it into a makeshift dagger. Meanwhile, the other one um, actually does use the disengage action. And just so everyone knows, the disengage action is another action you can take other than an attack on your turn, which means that if you're right next to someone, you can move away without them being able to take an attack of opportunity. It just foregoes your action for that turn. So yeah, um, the other drunk guy, he just kind of uh, <clears throat> just kind of keeps his wits about him as he just kind of takes a couple careful steps away from you. While both of you guys' attention was attracted to the one trapper that she just completely froze solid. Like froze on? You look, uh, you look back to the other Where one. Where is my super suit? Uh, you look back to the other one that you just floored. Uh -huh. He managed to slip away somewhere. Uh, so it is your turn in initiative again. Uh, I'm just gonna look at the other guy that doesn't get somebody. What? You don't think you can take on Shorty? Okay, um. <clears throat> he just kind of, uh. Clearly, you're more of a fight than I asked for. I don't know about my friend. And, uh, you actually notice that his friend is getting ready to charge straight towards you with his little makeshift dagger. <laughs> what you can do is, if you if you don't want to do anything right now, you can take the dodge action, which what that does is it gives you or it gives the next person who attacks you disadvantage on their attack. <laughs> Going back to you two's combat, uh, you two's. the one that was left just kind of slipped away while you got while neither one of you was paying attention. Nick, what are we doing at this point? <clears throat> oh. Where did he go? Yeah, whoa. <laughs> Um, the oh, other one's up in initiative. Sorry, is Ariel. I'm gonna run towards the runaway one. Run towards where he was. Yeah, and kind of like see where where I saw him go. Where did he go? Oh, can I even do that? I'm 35. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Five, ten. Easy, easy, easy. Okay. Five, five, ten, five, ten. So go ahead and make a perception check, and that's gonna be your action for this round. Dope. That's another action that you can take as opposed to um, an attack, is searching your environment. Which one is perception? It's under wisdom. It's under wisdom? Okay. So plus four for you, I think. Yeah, because I have perception. Yeah. 19 plus four. Nice. Um, you know exactly where you went. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, yeah, you just kind of charge over and look around, and he's definitely wearing a lot of green clothes and a large green cloak, so he, he was kind of blending in very well to a bu nearby bush. But as soon as you kind of charge over and survey your surroundings, you immediately point him out. And even though it's not your turn anymore, you can now see him. Hey! Can I, can I, can I, can I go yeah, through Yeah, you can pass her. Okay. Get over here! <laughs> Take up five feet. Um, and uh, I kind of do like a spinny move. A spinny move? <laughs> and then <laughs> hit him with the thing. A spinny move. The mace. Go ahead and roll to attack. What is that? 15. Go ahead and roll for no. damage. No. That's 16. I'm sorry. You go ahead and roll for damage. Three. Three? You can go ahead and narrate your kill and or knockout, whichever you prefer. I swing my axe. I mean, my, my mace. And I guess uh, I hit him in the ribs. 
And you can just hear a bunch of crunching <laughs> and blood. And he just grips <gasps> out his mouth and collapses to yeah. the ground. There you go. Yes. Am I am I allowed to search their belongings? Yes, you are. I would like to do that, please. You find really just a bunch of animal furs and meats and uh, Me. two silver coins. I was only able well, to find two silver coins, see. but I'll offer you one since you helped me oh, kill these okay. evil poacher people. Thank you. So I really we, appreciate it. No prob, but I'm keeping one. Okay. <laughs> Dropping to zero hit points. Anytime a character is knocked to zero hit points. <laughs> he did. Um, not necessarily, no. Uh -oh. It uh, means zero hit points just simply means that you are unconscious. However, if you drop to zero hit points with enough damage remainder equal to your max HP, you're dead. When you are <laughs> not when you, you are not unconscious but not killed, uh, you begin making death saving throws, which means, say, you know, your party's fighting a monster and you're knocked out, but the rest of the party is still going on. Each time it would be your character's turn in combat, you roll a d20, and oh, if you that wasn't it. and basically that's a difficulty ten check, um, and you keep track of it. Say you went, you succeed on the first one, you fail on the second one you just keep track of those there's actually a space on your character sheets to mark them um once you get up to three successful saving throws you are stabilized you're still unconscious but you don't have a fear of dying unless you take more damage basically um and three failed saves means you have died can someone someone can stabilize you in between those yes okay. um while you're making death saving throws, someone can come over to you and use their action to stabilize you, which basically has the same result as if you had three successful death saving throws. Um, while you're making those saves, if you roll a 1 or a 20, a 1 counts as two failed death saves, a 20 you actually regain consciousness with 1 HP. Varus Nilo. With the exception of the occasional monster hunting, you've lived a quiet life since your exile from the drow community in the Underdark, making your home in the wilderness. In your travels, you find a small cave that may offer some reprieve from the sunlight until it fades away. Um, let's see, until sunlight fades, so I'm stuck in a cave for a little bit. Uh, I want to survey my surroundings of this cave. Let's see if we can find some tracks or something. Go ahead and make a perception check. <laughs> so we've got 11 on perception. Okay, um, you perceive yeah, it looks like outside. a big cave and some trees. <laughs> Everything looks Gucci. Wow, this uh, is Gucci. Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alright, I'm going to uh, slowly make my way inside the cave. Warily. <laughs> Twerking my way downtown. Um, as soon as you step towards the cave, from either side of you, arrows just whoosh, whoosh, They're straight in front of your face. They barely miss you and both just kind of stick into the ground right next to you. And as soon as those <laughs> arrows come out... You know, there's <coughs> goblins standing right here Ooh. and right here. Here, what's it? Go ahead up? and no. roll there, for initiative. Uh, 17. Uh, um, so, <laughs> immediately after the two arrows fly out, you see both of these goblins just kind of jump out at you from either side. Um, one charges straight towards you with a scimitar. And what's your armor class? 15. Sticks it straight into your side, and you take four damage. You are up in initiative right now. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take a. Uh, I'm gonna spin swing my scimitar to the guy who's got a freaking sword sticking in my side. All right. Or, sorry, I have short swords. Go ahead and roll to attack at disadvantage. Disadvantage. Three. Oh, that's, the that's the disadvantage. disadvantage. Eighteen. <laughs> yeah. That's so true. yeah, um, with this grueling pain plus the sun just shining down in your face, you kind of. What did you say you were swinging at him? Uh, I was swinging my short sword. Uh, you just kind of swing your short sword wildly to the side of you. Just and being short. a goblin, he just easily ducks under it. Um, meanwhile, the thing. other goblin mm -hmm. is up in initiative. Arrow to the back. Oh, um, you see another arrow just kind of fly right behind you and uh, stick into a tree somewhere. Meanwhile, the goblin right next to you just kind of digs a scimitar even further, and uh, you take another six damage. What's your HP at now? Five. <laughs> Dang, son, how much HP you Yeah, got? how much HP you have? Oh, sorry, armor class there. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, down. Yeah. Four, I got one. My bad. 
Because I was at 10. I've taken 9 so far. Okay. I had enough to keep me alive. That's how much I got. <laughs> <laughs> Initiative is now on you with your 1 HP left. Oh, come on. Why has it got to be sunlight? What are you doing? 19. Oh, I'm going to take another swing at the guy who's digging deeper into my body. Okay. <clears throat> That's going to be a disadvantage again. Yeah, I know. You're such a genius. Oh, come on, dog. Just put a little yeah. spoonful right, in so there. So 19 and a 13. Plus, I get my what? My attack bonus? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, so we're at 19 and 26. Go ahead and no, roll for damage. 25. Four. Plus four. Eight. Go ahead and narrate your kill and or knockout. Uh, and or. As the guy digs his scimitar into my side, I'm just going to kind of grab him and plow my sword into his neck. Nice. I'm going to make my way towards the cave so I can get in some darkness at least. All right, you got 30 feet movement. Now, does it matter what uh, order that goes in? Can you attack and then move? No, move you, you can switch it up all okay. you want. Okay, so I'm a little deeper into the cave. So, yeah, as soon as you get into the cave, you feel an arrow stick into your back and just lose consciousness. Now moving on into spell casting. Um, spell casting works differently for every single class. The rules are slightly different. Um, one thing you do all have in common is all the spell casters here have cantrips, um, which are basically cantrips work just like weapons. You can use them every single turn if you want to, and they never run out. Whereas the first level spells you have, I think every spell caster here has two first level spell slots. Which means you can use two spell, uh, first level spells, and then you have to take a long rest again before you can use any more. So, Marcon Domini, having almost forgone the elven half of your heritage, you've lived out your days deep in the civilized city of Neverwinter, where you've become a professor of language and magic. Even so, you're never too experienced for a lesson from your oldest instructor, Professor Grecagon. He has called you into his study. As you enter, he says, Ah, oh, Marcon, pleasure to see you. How's that firebolt cantrip coming? Can use work. Do demonstrate. Light the fireplace for us, would you? I rolled a one. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, you hold out your arm and it just kind of, a couple sparks come out of your palm. And he says, try that again. Told you it needs work. <laughs> Do one more. Aw, you're a nice DM. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Was it a one? Nat 20. <laughs> Nat 20? Yeah. So, yeah, this time, instantly just fire, shoot a fireball across the room and whoosh, you see the whole fireplace behind him light up. I like that. <clears throat> he says, uh, Excellent. I've called you here today as I feel it's time for you to broaden your horizons. You boast to have read every book in our library, and why? I believe it. If you want to continue to expand your knowledge, it's time you entered the field. Grand as this institution may be, any one such establishment can only be expected to offer so much. It's time for the world to become your classroom, and I've got just the starting point for you. Um, you can, you, as he says this, you can already see that he's starting uh, this kind of enchantment going. You can see kind of energy swir swirling around him, and he's kind of extending his arms towards you. Are you saying anything as you see any of the, all this oh, happening? Oh, joy. Uh, <clears throat> So as all these energies are still kind of just circling around you, you hear him uh, say, You'll find yourself in Fandolin. Find Sister Gario. Ask her about the Harpers and tell them I've sent you. And as he says that, you disappear from the room. <laughs> <laughs>